Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues. And what is this hook? Human rights, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. They hide behind this and their intelligence agencies create an environment where they can pressure it. The current crisis in Pakistan is being managed by the Pakistan army. It is being managed by the ISI. It's not being managed by the civilian government. The civilian government is powerless. Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Now in Brampton in Canada, apparently there was uh, on the anniversary of Operation Blue Star, uh, there was, uh, you know, a parade. It was, they say, a five kilometer long parade in which they showed a tableau in which Satwan Singh and Bian Singh uh, were shown assassinating Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Now, let me give you a brief background. You all know what Operation Blue Star was and I have been one of the strongest critics of Operation Blue Star. Uh, I have said on record not once but a hundred times that it's a black spot in India. It should not have happened. Operation Blue Star is unforgivable. It's absolutely wrong. It was ab absolutely wrong. Will forever remain absolutely wrong. There is nothing morally that can justify Operation Blue Star. It could have been done in a much better manner. I never said no to Operation Blue Star per se. I said that you can use gas. You know, you can use gas in which everybody's unconscious. You need not have fired at the structure per se. That is my complaint against Operation Blue Star. But to have a tableau in which you show the assassination of a Prime Minister. This is in fact an open call to violence. And this is something that, uh, you know, the Canadian government, I don't know what Canadian government allows in the name of freedom of expression and freedom of speech. One and a half, two years back when truckers in Canada were protesting against Justin Trudeau, he declared a state of emergency. He had truckers arrested and assaulted by the Canadian police. So when it comes to Canada, when it comes to Canadian politics, they will not tolerate nonsense. But when it comes to some other country, Canada and UK both become these hubs of sedition. I mean, <clears throat> any seditious activity, you'll find a very fertile ground in Canada and the UK. Why is that? And I think we should take it very, very strongly. And here is a roadmap. I don't know if you're still doing it, but or if you're doing it at all. But here is something that we need to understand and do. Number one. I think we need to find out who all these people are. Who, who are these Khalistanis who did this? Absolutely reprehensible, absolutely wrong, abominable, and they should be punished. And the way to punish them is this. Canada is not going to do anything about it. And these people feel very happy, safe and secure in Canada. But they have properties in India. I'm talking about Khalistanis per se. Any Khalistani that supports the assassination of Indira Gandhi and who was involved in this, somebody must have made the tableau. Somebody must have paid for it, right? Somebody must have planned it. Let's find out who these people are and let's figure out where their properties in India are and seal their properties, take away their properties. That's it. This is how, when you kick the Khalistanis, you know, there is an Indian... Uh, you know, it's, it's in various Indian languages. It's in Hindi, but you know, you can find translations in various Indian languages. Pet Pilat. When you actually cause economic and financial distress for somebody, that is how the Khalistanis will come around. There is no other way. This is absolutely reprehensible, you know, a death of the former Prime Minister of India and uh, they're celebrating it. No doubt. The attack on Golden Temple I grieve as much as any other Sikh brother and sister. I hate it as much as any other Sikh brother and sister or any other Hindu or Muslim or Christian brother and sister. Of course I do. With all my heart I do. Operation Blue Star should not have happened. But to celebrate the killing of India's Prime Minister publicly. This is shocking. And I'm surprised that Canada, you know, all these countries, especially Western countries, they play this game very beautifully. They have a hook. They have a hook. And what is this hook? Human rights.
freedom of speech, freedom of expression. They hide behind this and their intelligence agencies create an environment where they can pressurize India. And I think Canada needs a hard response. There is no way Canada should not get a hard response. Because if Canada has allowed the public celebration of the murder and assassination of a head of state of a friendly country, then there is something mentally wrong with the government of Canada. I think they are mentally unwell. Khalistanis are of course dogs. And I'll, with apologies to the Canaan community, Khalistanis are absolute dogs. They don't deserve respect or mercy or anything like that. But what is wrong with the government of Canada? How can you be so two-faced? How can you allow, how can you allow the public celebration of the assassination of an Indian Prime Minister? What Indira Gandhi did was wrong. But she was the Prime Minister of India. And as such, she deserves respect. You and she, she's no more. She's not alive. You know, so how can, how can the government of Canada allow this? All in the name of freedom of speech. If tomorrow, and I want to tell the Canadian government, I want to tell the UK government, tomorrow if we start in India, and we've got 10 times your population here. 10 times your population. And we've got more money than Canada, we've got more money than UK. Tomorrow if we start doing this in India, tomorrow if we start saying freedom of expression, trust you me, you will find it difficult to go out of your embassies and your high commissions. You will stay locked up inside. Because every time you exit, there will be a crowd of 100,000 people standing outside your embassy protesting. And I think somebody should do that. I mean, it's... If I'm being racist about it, right, so be it. But this is the time to tell all these quote-unquote, white countries that you don't take India for granted. I'm sorry you don't take India for granted. There will be a pushback and there will be a hard response. And I would, I would ask, I would ask, you know, today, the Congress party, and why just the Congress party, even the BJP, every party, but especially the Congress party because she was from the Congress, Srimati Indira Gandhi. What have you done about it? What have you done about it? You want to protest for each and every small little thing. Oh, this has happened. We'll do this. And my question to Mr. Rahul Gandhi is this. You know, you find time to go abroad, abuse India in the USA, abuse India in the UK. Right? What are you doing about this? Srimati Indira Gandhi was your grandmother. And to her, you owe your current stature because nobody knows you otherwise. It was because of Srimati Indira Gandhi that you are known. It was because of Sri Jawaharlal Nehru that you know. They were, while they were, uh, you know, both Prime Ministers of India, Srimati Indira Gandhi was India's Prime Minister. And I call upon the government of the day to take very strong and diplomatic action, very strong diplomatic action against, uh, against Canada in this. You know, if you want to send somebody to Canada or you want to summon their High Commissioner, do that. Lodge a very strong protest and of course sort out these Khalistanis. I've already mentioned that. But I want to know what is the Congress party doing here? Yeah? What is the Congress party doing? Apart from tweeting, are you doing anything on ground? No, you want to do something on ground when you have an opportunity to go to the US or UK. When it suits your political ends. But here in Delhi, you're not going to do anything. Why don't you gather one or 200,000 people and march to the Canadian High Commission? Or rattle their cage and say, here we are. And unless the Canadian ambassador apologizes, we are not going to move from in front of the Canadian High Commission. Just get out it, block it. That's what I'm asking you to do. Do you have the courage? Would you do it? Would you do it, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, for the honor of your grandmother in a memory? Would you do it? And this is not just about the Congress party. Congress party should take the lead. But every party should join in. Let it be an all-party effort. Rattle the gates of the Canadian High Commission. Just rattle their gates. Let them know the power of 1.4 billion people. I disagree with uh, former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. I have a lot of disagreements with her, especially, especially how this Operation Blue Star was handled. I have very, very strong disagreements from the bottom of my heart. 
but you cannot celebrate the killing of my prime minister you can't do that i will not permit it whatever be my differences with her and you must ghere out the canadian high commission in new delhi and i would like the congress party to take the lead otherwise what's the point what's the point of you going all all the way to canada all the way to uk all the way to this country and that country and and us and saying that oh such and such thing happened in india and it's very bad and the freedom of this and freedom of that mr rahul gandhi claims to be a freedom of speech absolutist a freedom of expression absolutist does he also support the open glorification of the killing of his own grandmother by the khalistanis does he support that does he support that tableau what nonsense i would appeal to the congress party to gherao the canadian high commission till the time don't let the high commissioner of canada step out of the canadian high commission don't let him step out don't let anybody go in and let's see how they are able to function unless they apologize do something for honor do something for self respect do something for pride everything is not connected to a narrative there are bigger issues in life now former pakistani president asif ali zardari says that uh, you know he has an idea how he can take pakistan's economy from uh, you know a forex reserve of 4 billion dollars right now to 100 billion dollars and uh, you know being a pakistani this is what he does very well all spin doctors there no all spin doctors so you know then he goes on to explain how he will do it how pakistan's foreign exchange reserves will jump from 4 billion to 100 billion and asif ali zardari said you know i was in jail yaar i was in jail and when i was in jail i read a lot of books on economics and i became an economist i i too have read a lot of comics yeah asterix and tintin yeah that doesn't make me a cartoonist though i draw cartoons of pakistan very often but that does not make me a cartoonist so i don't know what what is mr zardari smoking but one thing i'll tell you he's a very astute politician this man and there are reasons behind the statement which many pakistanis may not have understood at this point in time some would have understood he is trying to position his son bilawal bhutto as the next prime minister of pakistan take it from me he is doing that the current crisis in pakistan is being managed by the pakistan army it is being managed by the isi it's not being managed by the civilian government the civilian government is powerless right and this government of the pakistan muslim league noon right pmln they have a history with the pakistan army they are not 100% trustworthy as far as the pakistan army is concerned but bilawal bhutto zardari is new in the game you know he's just been he's just been foreign minister for a little over over a year and this guy is something or is somebody that the pakistani army feels that they can mold and they can you know sort of uh, pressurize so his candidature is acceptable to the pakistani army also because pakistani army feels that while we control the nation while we run the affairs of the nation we need a civilian face to tell the world that hey we are a democracy and there is no more a useful idiot than bilawal bhutto zardari and the last news coming out of pakistan for the day ladies and gentlemen is this asim munir general asim munir chief of army staff of the pakistan army called a conference in which he said that the perpetrators of the 9th may violence will not be spared and they will be tried under the army act now this whole army act thing a lot of people have written to me that major sab uh, why under the army act are the courts not functional no the courts in pakistan are very much functional there is no problem with the courts except that the supreme court of pakistan acts as an office of the pakistan tehreek insaf chief justice umar ata bandeyal talks and acts like a pti worker you know uh, when imran khan came to court the first thing he said was i'm so happy to see you khan sahab please take care of yourself is there anything i can do for you the chief justice of pakistan is or acts subservient to imran khan niazi this is no longer a, a neutral court this is no longer a court i'm talking about the chief 
justice of pakistan and his court the supreme court of pakistan this is no longer a court that is that is uh, you know uh, that that can that can uh, uphold the law no this is a court that acts as an extension of the pakistan tehreek insaf which is why general asim munir the chief of army staff of the pakistan army is saying that we need military courts let's get everybody to the military courts because once you are sentenced by a military court in pakistan nobody can do anything about it including including the chief justice of pakistan because that will be the last word of the law when an army officer in pakistan says that this will be done then this will be done so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching this video if you like this video press the like button subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai